Episode 1 of Summer Heat Season 1 begins with a whole group of teenagers showing up on Shell Island. It's the middle of summer, the sun is shining, and the kids are preparing for summer jobs. In the height of the opening night party, Katerina ends up getting engaged to Rodrigo. Only, Rodrigo is a bit of a player, and that night he's encouraged by his friends to kiss another woman, Helena. Classy. Well, Katerina ends up seeing them together and contemplates whether to break things off. If that wasn't enough drama, Katerina's mother is arrested by police, who show up and charge her with money laundering. Because of this, Katerina's accounts and lavish lifestyle is under jeopardy, and she learns from her uncle that she's on the verge of losing everything. In the middle of all this, Miguel ends up getting spooked and believes the police after him. With a whole stash of drugs, he hides it inside a guitar case. A case that belongs to another newbie on the island, Conrado. A new morning, a new start, all the kids get dressed and prepare for their first day on the island. Marija briefs them on what their roles will be for the day. Marilia is in charge of the yoga classes, Miguel is to lead the hikes and Helena is to look after the guests in case they drink too much. Diego, meanwhile, is to work with the boats. Conrado is on porter duties while finally, Yasmin is to man the reception. Helena being on waitress duties serves as a big problem. Given she hooked up with Rodrigo the night before, she realizes that he's with Katerina and tasks Diego with serving her instead. Katerina's anger eventually spills over when Rodrigo shows up and admits it was her mother's idea to marry. Katerina eventually breaks up with him and walks off. In doing so, she ends up hooking up with Diego, right in view of Rodrigo. Conrado's overbearing parents follow him to the island. Stressed, he struggles to compose himself. So Miguel encourages him to let his anger out and curse, while high up on the island. This helps him grow some confidence and sing in front of everyone. His parents are not happy, though and believe he's deceived them. His parents demand he leave the island, but the other kids manage to convince him to stay behind. In doing so, he drops his guitar case, with the drugs still inside, in the water. Yasmin has her own reasons for being on the island. She's busy investigating ties to the past and specifically that involving Marija. It turns out, she's actually his long-lost daughter. Episode 2 of Summer Heat begins with Yasmin confronting Marija with the bombshell news about her past. Vilma shows up and asks what's happening but he lies, claiming it's to do with paperwork. This hits Yasmin hard as she walks away. In doing so, we learn this island used to be home to a number of different fishermen, but they were evicted from the island for reasons unknown. Graffiti reading Give Our Homes Back echoes back to earlier struggles for these men and women to maintain their land. If that wasn't enough. The eviction notice we saw last episode is brought into context here, given it's for the hotel they're all working at. This could well prove to be decisive later on down the line. Yasmin remains determined to wake our people up and pursues a more liberating stance. In the morning, Vilma tasks Yasmin with putting her photography to good use. She wants her to take some appealing photos of the hotel and its guests. After a failed attempt to connect from Marija, Yasmin uploads the photos to social media, using a tagline the island belongs to the people. Yasmin takes this idea to the rest of the group, deciding they should take the money originally planned to buy a new AC unit and use it to help the local fishermen. Democratically they do a vote, and it's unanimously in favor of getting air conditioning. Katerina shows up to work late and is immediately tasked with a big brunch order for Bungalow 12, and that is inevitably for Rodrigo, whose friends push her to the limit. Having grown closer to Conrado, Miguel encourages him to join him over to Bungalow 12, where he sells them weed. Although they make the deal, Rodrigo forces the workers to smoke with them. Conrado is peer pressured into smoking. Later that afternoon, Diego and Katerina head out for a boat ride. While they leave, Diego mentions he has some things from his past he needs to sort out, this appears like it's going to be important going forward. Katerina, though, is desperate to get back to her old rich lifestyle and continues to hound her uncle for news. It's not good, and it doesn't look like her mom is getting free any time soon either. While they're gone, a stone Conrado, acting surprisingly hyperactive which absolutely is not how stone people behave, ends up hooking up with Helena. 
out in the open, she takes his top off, but realizes he's worried and believes he's not enjoying it. Yasmin's social media post gets her into hot water with Vilma. She dances around firing her, but hot-headed Yasmin walks out anyway. When Marija finds out, he rushes out to catch up with Yasmin after Hurley mentioning to Vilma that he may have familial ties with her. Down on the docks, the pair finally hash out their differences. Marija admits they're from different worlds, but encourages her to stay so they can blend those two worlds together and get to know one another better. This, in turn, allows Marija to convince Vilma to let her stay. Now, given the pair are in a relationship, Marija admits all of this happened before the pair were an item. Meanwhile, Yasmin learns more about the history of the hotel from Miguel. It turns out Elias, Rodrigo's father, is actually the third partner and owns the spa. He's the one who evicted everyone, while Marija was actually the one who helped keep the people on the island. She's clearly got it all wrong about her estranged father. That night, more drama ensues between Diego and Rodrigo. The latter shows up on the beach, and a fight breaks out between the two Katarina steps in and stops them though. Rodrigo decides to leave the island, and as he heads home ends up looking at his trophy for being the junior surf champion. In the morning, Katarina's big story about being robbed is brought to light. Yasmin opens up the closet and finds bags from Dream May. Turns out she went shopping in. Episode 3 of Summer Heat starts with a big announcement. It's Shell Island's anniversary and the gang are divided up into different tasks, warned that they're going to have to work hard. Katarina is absent though, and she pleads with Yasmin to keep her shopping a secret. As Yasmin rushes into the main living area, Marija catches her off guard tasking Yasmin with taking underwater pictures and subsequently seeing Yasmin keep the shopping a secret for now. Katarina's uncle, Hasif, smuggles a phone into jail. He warns that her little gifts are running out fast and implores her to try and do right by Katarina. So she rings her daughter and informs her that the money for Switzerland has been relocated. She also brings up Katarina's engagement to Rodrigo and encourages her to think of her future. Katarina is crushed. After all, she wants a mother who genuinely cares and this woman only cares about money. Yasmin happens to be listening to this conversation and comes to an agreement with Katarina. She'll keep her secret in exchange for her taking the underwater photos. Given they've swapped places, Katarina loses her bracelet in the water. Diego dives down and finds it, but in doing so flashes of his past come bleeding through. Specifically from a dead body that holds the bracelet. Only, this is actually a hallucinations. It does, however, shed light on parts of his past, which I'm sure will be explored in more detail over the season ahead. Meanwhile, Vilma expresses her concerns about Marija getting too invested in Yasmin, potentially being his daughter. So she hands over a DNA paternity test and implores him to learn the truth. Speaking of truth, Conrado's current issues involving Helena actually stem from a truth he's hiding from the others. It would appear that he has the hots for Yasmin, but he tells her he's sick of doing what Miguel wants all the time and just wants to branch out. Yasmin also reveals some truths of his own, pointing out that she has a boyfriend who's currently on the run in Sao Paulo. She also can't swim either, which is apparently a requirement for the island, so Yasmin lied on her application. This also explains why she switched places with Katarina too. Meanwhile, Elias learns that Miguel is selling weed on the island and demands he be fired. The thing is, Marija has footage of Rodrigo trashing his room and he uses this as leverage to show that he's only got himself to blame. This embarrasses Elias, who decides Rodrigo is going to work for him from now on. That night, celebrations get underway and Rodrigo immediately stirs things up with a good dose of misunderstandings. He tells Marilia that Diego kissed Katarina, which crushes her. Episode 4 of Summer Heat begins with Miguel lying with Conrado as the pair start kissing. Only this happens to be a big dream, as Conrado awakens with a start. Yasmin encourages Katarina to do a BuzzFeed quiz, which indicates that she may have a psychological problem with shopping because nothing screams accurate like a BuzzFeed test, eh? Rodrigo starts working for his dad at Omnia Enterprises, complete with a suit and tie, and copious amounts of alcohol. Well, he decides to leave and rocks up on the island in the next scene. 
Meanwhile, big drama ensues as the wifi signal drops. Calls are coming in about it from disgruntled guests, so Vilma gathers the troops and calls a staff meeting. Marija's tasked with sorting the network cables out, which delays his scheduled whale-watching tour with Yasmin until later in the episode. The real issue here is with the antenna, and with Vilma phoning the providers and try to come up with a solution, the rest of the teens are forced to do without internet for the time being. In the middle of this, Miguel is called into Marija's office and questioned about the drugs. He loses his cool though, and while trembling, heads on to the beach, where he starts coughing and hyperventilating. Rodrigo is thankfully there to help calm him down though. Only, this escalates into the pair fighting over the drugs. Meanwhile, Marilia continues to keep her distance from Diego who ends up cozying up to Caterina instead. At least that's her perception anyway. In reality, she's helping him with his studies given he's trying to be a lifeguard. When it comes to teaching mouth to mouth, Diego gets cold feet before they touch lips and hurries off. Out on the water, Yasmin goes on her whale watching trip but ends up almost drowning. When she's saved, she eventually admits the truth to Marija that she can't swim. Marija smiles though, brushing it off and calling her an amazing girl. He promises to be there for her as the pair do end up seeing the whales just as they were scheduled to beforehand. The pair have a really touching moment together as they eventually head back to shore. The internet returns soon after and quells the wifi drama hanging over this episode without much aplomb. Vilma though, after helping Yasmin clean her bloodied elbow, seems to take her blood to use for a DNA test. The scene lingers on her putting it inside a bag, so I'm guessing that's what's happening here. Elsewhere, Marilia confronts Diego about him kissing Katerina. He doesn't deny it, but does try to brush it off, claiming it didn't mean anything. Marilia decides he should leave, given she needs to look after her daughter, Sophia, and he has a big test to prepare for. Later that day, Conrado notices Miguel seemingly praying. Only, he's definitely not. Snatching up an envelope from under the bed, he takes off. Conrado follows him as he heads to a house up the coast. As the episode closes, Diego rushes over to Katerina and lets her know that he's passed the first test. Only, the second test is taking place on February 25th, the day his brother died. Episode 5 of Summer Heat begins with Miguel handing over the mysterious envelope to his dad. Conrado watches all of this take place silently from the window. Meanwhile, Yasmin remains heartbroken over Kai breaking up with her last episode. She leaves numerous voicemails and decides to head out surfing. In doing so, she also ends up growing closer to Miguel too. It looks like we've got a love triangle on our hands. This is something made more complicated when Miguel gets changed with Conrado. The latter struggles to stay compassed and verbalize how he's feeling. Eventually he ends up flustered and walks away. Helena ends up spooked on her shift too when she notices a guy called Leo, an old bully from fifth grade, show up. She decides to ditch on her shift and hurries away. However, that night Yasmin ends up telling her Katerina's secret about the shopping. Diego learns that Marilia is actually the one dealing drugs with Miguel. Diego is not happy and scoffs at the incredulousness of the whole situation. He hands back his house keys to her and refuses to acknowledge her pleas about it being tough to be a single mum. When he walks away, Diego runs into Katerina and reveals everything that's just transpired. He's also tellingly silent when the conversation steers across to their possible relationship. Predictably, Helena spills the truth about Katerina's shopping to the whole gang. Katerina admits the truth about what she's going through involving her mum, as well as how hard things have been for her. Only, midway through everyone starts to have an adverse reaction to the cleaning products, and they're forced to leave the dorm room. Rodrigo tries to get in Katerina's good books again, and manages to grant her a visit to see her mum in prison. When Katerina shows up, she promises to do everything possible to make her daughter happy. The conversation inevitably turns back around to Rodrigo again, and this sours the whole chat, realizing her mother isn't ever going to change. Helena, ever the gossip, decides to look after Sophia in order to hide from Leo. She switches shifts with Marilia. In doing so, Helena learns about Marilia selling weed. 
Given how quickly she spread the news about Katerina, this certainly doesn't look great for Marilia's prospects. Just before the night's big party, I say big, there's barely a handful of people in this large room, Conrado thanks Miguel and in private, ends up kissing him. He's taken aback and in the absence of any talking, Conrado grows worried and leaves. Marilia ends up talking to Helena that night, who divulges a secret of her own. It's here we learn what happened with Leo, who used to tease her and call her free willy. She had to have surgery and almost died too, which only makes things worse. This has badly affected her, at least this episode anyway, and as the pair bond, they come to an understanding about what they've both been through, and how they're continuing to try and be the best version of themselves. This gives her enough courage to confront Leo and tell him that she's changed, and she's not the same woman she was all those years ago. More drama ensues that night though as Miguel and Yasmin end up kissing. However, Conrado is also there too. Miguel takes him aside and the pair have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Miguel admits that Conrado is important to him, and he'll always be his friend, but for Conrado, he obviously wants more than that. In the morning, Marisia sees the state of the hotel and the other kids, and decides to kick Miguel out. Only, Conrado appears and claims he's the one responsible for the bazooka and Al. Episode 6 of Summer Heat begins with Conrado's future on Shell Island in jeopardy. Miguel is understandably feeling guilty, but Conrado decides to leave the island to gain some perspective. Marisia encourages him to do what's right for him, urging Conrado to return afterwards. After hooking up with Leo that night, Helena is a bundle of energy. She talks to Marilia and mentions how she lost her virginity to him that night. Only, she can't remember if she actually used a condom. So naturally, it looks like we may go the route of her falling pregnant. We shall see. Miguel catches up with Conrado who's fine with his decision. He claims it's his way of saying thanks for Miguel helping him through a rough patch. There's no hard feelings here, and after everything they've been through, all the gang gather together to say goodbye to their friend. With all of his gear packed up, Conrado leaves his guitar behind with Miguel and heads on a boat off the island. In her absence, the attention turns across to Elias who decides to move forward with his construction plans. With the eviction for the hotel due to go ahead soon, he's going to press ahead with this, even if it means Marisia and the others being out of a job. Marisia promises to do his best to block him, pointing out he was the one who originally stopped the construction in the first place. Angry, Elias heads down to the beach, where he finds Rodrigo shell-shocked after being given bad news from Marisia. He's going away on a business trip and tells Rodrigo that when he returns, he needs to be out the house for good. Elsewhere, Diego struggles to continue achieving his lifeguard licenses. He's still haunted by the ghosts of the past, although Katerina does her best to try and talk him around. The thing is, Diego was there when his brother died and he saw everything. His brother drunk too much and fell off the boat, subsequently drowning. Diego blames himself for Danilo's death, which explains his trauma and baggage he's been carrying. It's been a month since the newbies arrived on the island, and both Marisia and Vilma decide to celebrate this momentous occasion with a cake. Yasmin immediately blurts out that Marisia is her dad, while Katerina is embraced by the others with open arms after combating her shopping problem. Things take a turn for the worst on the island when Demas, one of the fishermen, finds his boat destroyed. He believes this is Elias's doing, and when Yasmin and the others find out, decide to set to work stopping his plan from panning out. Well, we soon learn that Yasmin got into college and Diego has passed his lifeguard test. We didn't see either of these on screen though, but we do see the aftermath. Diego kisses Katerina, while Diego takes Yasmin out and admits he's in love with her. As the episode closes out, an earlier incident involving a stolen purse for a guest called Paula comes to light. It appears that someone is involved in credit card fraud, using her car to buy diamonds. As it's called it, she believes it originated from Marisia Hotel. Is this Katerina? Episode 7 of Summer Heat begins with Diego reflecting back on his past. Specifically, being with his brother Danilo and spending time together. It's something that's defined him throughout his life, and after passing his lifeguard licenses, he's ready to honor his life. This doesn't deter Katerina either, who remains by his side. 
Meanwhile, Yasmin has big opportunity and despite only starting to surf a while back, Marisia and Vilma want to put her name forward for some scouts. Things go from bad to worse for Marilia, who's confronted by Keiko, a face from the past. He's mixed up in the drugs too, but he puts on a sympathetic facade, pointing out that he knows she's struggling with bills at the moment. This essentially forces her hand, as Marilia heads out and starts peddling drugs at the bar. She's doing a special offer, but when she tasks Helena with bringing the orders to different tables, she gets them mixed up. Marilia is not happy and tells Helena to get her head out the clouds. After dropping a dinghy in Elias's pool several episodes back, Elias returns home to find it, and immediately retorts through gritted teeth, son of a bitch. Elias marches over to Marisha's office and claims that the site is under risk, which is one of the clauses he can use in the contract to get his construction plans moving. He shows off a video of the kids throwing the raft in the pool and uses this, alongside the social media posts from Yasmin, as ammo. Meanwhile, Katerina ends up receiving a delivery to the hotel which happens to have jewelry inside. Given Paula the woman claiming fraud last episode showed up earlier at the hotel, it does appear that Katerina has been fooling them all and bought these for herself. After Miguel and Yasmin hooked up last episode and declared their love, things take a crazy turn when Kai, her ex, shows up on the island. He wants to start over, but Yasmin is obviously in a very different place now. As Yasmin kisses him goodbye for the last time, encouraging him to leave, Miguel awakens and sees the pair kissing each other. The thing is, this comes right off the back of him being mugged and with his cabin left estate. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out later on down the line. This kiss doesn't deter Yasmin from her game plan though, as she heads out and surfs, making a big impression with the scouts. Rodrigo shows up late and misses his chance to impress them. He's also drunk too, and realizing his aspirations in life are spiraling out of control, decides to go surfing. Yasmin races back to reception, telling Katerina that she needs to find Rodrigo and quick. While Miguel is distraught over Yasmin cheating on him, Sofia starts choking, having an allergic reaction to the shrimp. Diego and Katerina race down to find Rodrigo who finds himself out at sea, struggling and on the verge of drowning. Diego puts his lifeguarding skills to the test and tries to save Rodrigo before it's too late. Does Diego save Rodrigo's life? Episode 8 of Summer Heat wastes absolutely no time picking up where we left off. Rodrigo is drowning, and Diego tries to reach him. Echoes of the past bleed through, but Danilo's spirit helps Diego overcome his fears and save Rodrigo's life. He's pulled back to the shore, with no serious injuries. After saving Rodrigo from the ocean, Diego admits to Katerina that he feels a lot calmer and seems to have let go of his past. He wants to spend his future with her and sets up a trip to leave tomorrow. They're going to make a fresh start of it and head for Chile. Just before she goes, Katerina heads to jail to speak to her mother. She admits she's leaving, but her mother scoffs at the idea and questions whether Katerina has really told him who she is. This causes Katerina to get cold feet and confronts Diego, deciding they should break up. Her reasoning is pretty weak and centers on believing she'll hurt him, but the irony is, she's already hurting him now by breaking up. Elias meanwhile, peddles the story that Rodrigo tried to commit suicide. With his mum nowhere to be seen, and trouble with the construction, Rodrigo makes his choice and offers his help. What happens with Helena and the drugs? Meanwhile, Yasmin catches up with Miguel. He's a mess, especially after seeing her cheat on him last episode. Another character who's a mess is Marilia, who continues to deal drugs with Keiko. He hands over the package for her to sell, which, as it turns out, is the last one. When Helena presses Marilia on the truth, she reveals that Keiko will be paying his alimony in cash every month from now on. Only, that also means he's going to share custody of Sophia. After what happened with Sophia last episode, Marilia is completely broke and doesn't have any other choice. Well, Helena decides to repay her earlier kindness about facing her fears and decides to pay off her debts. As the pair embrace, it seems things are on the up for the pair. Hiding the evidence. Katerina meanwhile, continues to hide her deception from Paula. 
it seems she's not grown at all since the opening episode, where she deceived the gang and went shopping behind their backs. She tries to cover her tracks by reformatting the reception computer. She feigns ignorance with Vilma who nonchalantly shrugs it off, claiming there's a backup. Uh oh. That's a big blow for Katerina who realizes this could show evidence of her stealing. Does Conrado return to the island? He does, yes. Conrado returns and he's back working again. He's managed to get in the right headspace. He's spoken to his parents and things seem to be on the up, especially as he's realized this island is his real home. What happens between Miguel and Yasmin? Miguel is not in the right head space, though as we know, and eventually hashes out his issues with Yasmin. He calls her out for cheating, but Yasmin tries to explain everything. It falls on deaf ears, though as Miguel mentions he's losing his dad to Parkinson's. Since he's had all his meds stolen, and seeing Yasmin cheating on him, it resulted in a big panic attack that he's still suffering the after effects from. Off the back of this, he decides to call things off with Yasmin. Heading home, he finds his dad sitting out on the rocks with a kite. He indirectly gives some words of advice, using a mayfly analogy, to basically show that life is short, and we should seize every opportunity given to us. Realizing he needs to resolve his issues with Yasmin, Miguel heads back to see the gang. Does Katerina reveal the truth? Unfortunately, drama soon ensues when Paula arrives with big news. She's traced the IP address back to this hotel. Someone inside has stolen her gear. As she grills Vilma about the cowboys working for her, with a slight hint of racism bleeding through, Katerina packs up her gear and hightails it away from the island. The police have been called, and that poses a particularly big problem. When Katerina receives a message from Helena about the hotel coming under fire, she heads back and admits the truth. She was the one who made the purchases. While Katerina is called in for questioning, Marija confronts Vilma about the DNA test she did behind her back. Holding the slip of paper, Yasmin sees the pair together and immediately believes he's gone behind her back. There's an awful lot of these misunderstandings in this show, aren't there? Katerina admits to the stealing and tries to rationale it by claiming that the rich don't notice a small amount from being taken from their accounts. Even an amount like 10,000. One of the main reasons she did this was in relation to her mum, and we see her drop off an envelope to her uncle in a past flashback. I guess we were led to believe this is actually money. Anyway, Katerina apologizes to Rodrigo and Diego, eventually leaving in handcuffs with the officers. As she's taken away, Diego stops her and demands to know why. She coughs up a sorry, but doesn't divulge much more, leaving him to stew. Is Marija really Yasmin's father? So what's on the DNA test results? Well, Marija hasn't even opened the envelope and hands it over to Yasmin, telling her that what she does with it is entirely up to her. She stuffs it in her bag and takes off. Unfortunately this also means Miguel misses his chance to get back and see his lover, who takes one last look at the island before sitting by the shore. On her own, she contemplates whether to open the envelope or not. Eventually she does, and in doing so heads back inside to see the others. We don't actually see what's on the envelope, but given she was adamant about leaving, it would appear that the results confirm that Marija is her dad. Given this was her big motivation for coming to the island in the first place, it makes sense it's also the reason she's staying. How does Summer Heat Season 1 end? As the episode closes out, Rodrigo decides to prove himself and is hired as the manager of the hotel. With Elias on the verge of destroying this sanctuary for the lost and those cast adrift, everyone bands together and decide to fight back against the system. But is Rodrigo really on their side? Diego decides to leave and head back to Santiago, while Caterina leaves them all a message, apologizing for her mistakes and admitting she's had the best summer of her life. Theory of last episode. So Summer Heat bows out with a conclusive chapter that doesn't really wrap up very much. This is ultimately a bait for season 2 which sees very little actually resolved. Conrado just rocks back up with very little fanfare, and everyone is absolutely fine with it. We see no conclusion to this angle involving Miguel, while Yasmin is left in limbo, 
and we're not given many answers to whether she's really Marija's daughter or not. Meanwhile, we don't actually get to see who robbed Miguel, unless I miss that completely, while there's very little depth and growth for anyone in this show. The best example of this comes from Katerina who begins as a spoilt, rich girl who's a bit of an opportunist with an addiction to shopping. By the end, she's still a spoiled girl and still stealing with a shopping addiction. There are some nice moments to this show though, namely that involving Helena and Marilia who do have nice conclusive arcs here after the drama they've been through. Unfortunately that's not enough to help raise this above mediocrity in what's otherwise been a pretty disappointing series. If this is renewed for another round of drama, let's hope the writing improves, because despite the beautiful landscape, this show settles in a murky shade of grey. There are an abundance of teen dramas on Netflix and Summer Heat feels like a bland conglomerate of them all. There's a touch of drug taking, a pinch of teen sex, a lot of deceptions and misunderstandings along with plenty of interpersonal character stakes. With a weak overarching story, a lot of melodramatic nothingness and a story that leaves things on a frustratingly open note, Summer Heat is a tepid and indifferent drama that has absolutely nothing to help it stand out in this crowded and saturated field. The story here centers on a group of diverse teens who all find themselves working on an island for the summer. Specifically, they're working at a hotel resort, catering for guests, and getting up to mischief in the process. With eight episodes showcasing a whole month of drama between them all, Summer Heat juggles a lot of different subplots, but aside from keeping the plate spinning, doesn't really do anything remarkable or overly impressive. In fact, this show seems to revel in its own cliched mediocrity. You've got Yasmin, a spunky and tenacious teen intending on finding her birth father. Katerina is the rich, bratty girl, Helena the bubbling, innocent one, Conrado the quiet introspective musician and Miguel, who takes and deals drugs. Rodrigo settles into the suave jock of the group, while Marilia is a single mum. All the characters are so archetypal in one note, and none of them grow all that much over the season. Sure they all have dramatic events happen to them, but very few actually grow and acknowledge their issues. One such character who does, is Diego. He has some past trauma involving his brother, and by the end, this is handled both elegantly and with finesse. It's easily one of the standout stories of the whole show, but it's blanketed around the other stories that aren't all that impressive. Some of this can be attributed to the lack of central focus, which is a real problem. Episode 2 for example, brings up a case for evicted fishermen and Yasmin's drive to try and save them. Then it's completely forgotten about until episode 8. Between this, episodic bursts of contrived drama range from a whiffy signal cutting out for the afternoon to random characters from the past showing and causing havoc for a while. It's all quite uninspired stuff and the plot dynamics revolve around scenarios we've seen a million times before. The misunderstanding trope, when a character thinks they've seen something and misinterprets it, is used numerous times, while echoes of love triangles are here too. All of this adds up to a rather messy and formulae teen drama with very little going for it. The colorful visuals and interesting locale essentially amount for nothing when the writing is so lackluster. And that ultimately sums up summer heat. This is less spicy heat and more ice-cold mediocrity. This Brazilian series is a real disappointment, and across its eight episodes, does absolutely nothing to stand out from the myriad of other dramas in this field.